Hey, what's good, everybody? It's me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, or should I say Santa Banks, and you are watching and listening to a brand new episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Joining me as always are my co-hosts from the Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks podcast, Terrific Trav and Rebellious D. How you fellas doing today? Here, baby. Terrific. Ready to rock. I love it. And joining us is a legend in the game. We all listened to her when we were kids. We grew up. We've known her. And now we are adults. And we still listen to her because she was our favorite Gohan on Dragon Ball Z. On Dragon Ball is Goku. And that is Miss Stephanie Nadoni. How are you doing today, Stephanie? Fabulous. Never better. How's it hey, going out there? I'm doing great. It's awesome. <laughs> this is the... <laughs> This is the first episode of the Great Gingerbread War, which is approaching us pretty fast. And uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. You're welcome. So before we get into today's interview, everybody that's watching, make sure that you watch this, uh, not watch, but make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button. So that way you're always notified when we have new content here on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. And D, like you say at the start of every episode, Say your magic words. <sighs> like, follow, subscribe to the channel, podcast in the description. Thank you for watching. That's all you got to do. That's all it. right. You do. Just you like do. that. Just like that. <laughs> click, so click, click. Go, so let's go ahead and get into it. So, Stephanie, yes. something that we do here on every episode is we ask, what is your origin story? Every hero or villain has one. So tell everybody who Stephanie is. Oh, mine? Little old me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You know, I just came bopping into the world, singing and dancing before I could speak and walk. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was just a little walking tape recorder. I would mimic anything and everything I heard, perform, sing, um, any chance I could get. Uh, I was always ready for any kind of an audience, whether it be my family, my grandparents, um, friends on the schoolyard, on the merry-go-round. I'd just give concerts and entertain anybody and everybody i loved putting smiles on faces and making people laugh and smile and uh i think that that's just kind of who i am i'm i, I don't know how to be anyone else you know so i'm still uh immersed in all of that type of stuff i mean i'm i'm teaching piano and voice now to little kids which is awesome i love children nice and um i've just been kind of reinventing myself and after COVID, just trying to kind of come up with creative ways to um, generate commerce um, in ways that I can still remain in the field of music and voice acting. And um, thankfully, um, I guess we're all here. So we're uh, little miracles. Mm -hmm. We're surviving this That's crazy right. world and all of its mm -hmm. changes over the years. So um, I'm just happy to be back in the con circuit. I'm um, face to face with my fans, which is where I love to be um it's a blessing i'm so grateful yeah so yeah, i'm just um awesome. just a little performer just a little ball of energy that just refused to be uh <laughs> squashed my spirit yeah, just right. the spirit ball the spirit well ball? it's like <laughs> it's kind of like if someone tries to pin me down it's just like i just always seem to squiggle free and that's hey, what pinballs do hey i know it you're I'm using back. the wrestling terms and uh you know I'm a professional wrestler, so it's just like whenever somebody goes to pin me, I always kick out unless uh, right. I get cheated or something. I mean, Trav mm -hmm. seen me get hit with a steel chair before, and uh, oh, yeah, I, I loved was... it. That's the thing; it's <laughs> not like always it. a quick recovery, and that's for me personally. My my life has been this crazy up and down roller coaster for many many years, and then sometimes life and things happen, and it'll knock you down and feel like you're out of the game, and then you just have to find a way and you know, hold on to that spark. Like right. you said, to kick back mm -hmm. and kick, even if it takes some time, there's right. a way That's to rise out do. of it. That's what yes. heroes do. All right, you got to put on that Santa hat. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. So I want to ask you, because uh, to piggyback off of something you said about returning to the con scene, I had met you at Fayetteville Comic Con, and I want to know, was that the first con that you did since uh, everything started opening back up, or had you been doing any cons before then? Um, for me personally, um, you know, most everything shut down and then, you know, I had to cancel all my gigs with my band and kind of just figure out some other things to do in 2020. But I, I was still invited and did, I did some, 
some cons. I uh, I, I was invited to, I think, um, Jacksonville, Florida for one. And then there was um, my, my alma mater show band, touring band, was having a 49th anniversary. And so while I was there, I jumped on with a couple of the uh, comic book shops in the New Orleans area, was able nice. to do some there. And then lately I've been in San Antonio a few times, just different parts of Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, mostly closer by than previous years, pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. But uh, Fayetteville was definitely one of the ones that was the furthest away from home mm -hmm. in over a year. So it was, yeah. But I was on board. I was ready to get to, to travel and get out in front of the fans again. Um, it's absolutely my favorite. I love hearing the, the stories and about when they watch a show if it helped them through hard times and mm -hmm. well how fulfilling is that to, to absolutely fired um young people of all ages and really in multiple countries i mean this show uh mm -hmm. wow it's Touches uh, a lot mm -hmm. it's a lot more popular than i ever would have ever dreamed when i was cast as kid goku from in the uh the ginyu saga Yes, you know, many, many years, over two decades ago when I started work on this, on these characters. That's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, you know, I wanted to ask you since we're on the con talk, uh, what are some of your favorite moments that you've had, like going to cons over the years? Oh, just like I said, you know, getting face to face with the fans of all ages. It's, it's really kind of fun to see like the kids are amazing. I absolutely adore children. So being around the kids and them recognizing some of the characters and pointing and saying, cuckoo, cuckoo, or, you know, that's precious. And then to share uh, stories with their parents, like some of these real little kids are watching Dragon Ball or, you know, Dragon Ball Z with mm -hmm. their parents who were fans when they were kids. So it's kind of neat to see the transcending, you know, show that's kind of transcending a lot of uh barriers as far as generations and things like that and how people can still relate to the show and you know embrace the you know little goku's innocence and the whole story behind it and you know just getting face to face with the fans and they're you know the watching people watching all these amazing misfits and weebs and you know because i mean i i feel like i've been i was a misfit growing up and moved around a lot and run it kind of didn't fit in so it's just really awesome to see these these people that really love to do these conventions for whatever reason to cosplay and get out and meet their you know the, whether they be a celebrity or you know voice actor artist vendors you know it's just really it's a, it's just living in the moment. It's like that's where you are. These are the people you're around in that, and then that becomes your memories, and it becomes, you know, what drives you. And so for me, you know, getting out in front of the, the fans and interacting, like if the convention allows, if there's not like this crazy line, and there's like, I try to give the fans a lot of face time, um, regardless of kind of how big or small the event might be. You know, some of them are tiny and they're very cozy and I might be the only guest. And then there's others that are way, way crazier and larger. And, and, and I get to mingle with some of the other guests that I'm a fan of. I get all fangirly, fanboy, whatever you say. Nice. <laughs> um, you know, it's a, uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I know uh, when we had interviewed Kyle A. Bear, he uh -huh. had mentioned that, you know, when he, growing up, he was a huge wrestling fan and he still is. And he would be at these cons and like he would see wrestlers that he grew up watching. And right. he would just say that it's just like, you know, you have to be professional, but it's like inside, it's just like you're fangirl and fanboying, you know what I'm saying? But, so, yep. So it's definitely I know. awesome to hear that. It's funny too, when you talk about, we talk about how much time has passed. When I first started doing conventions before I even knew the popularity of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, the franchise, the show in general. My first convention was San Diego Comic-Con in the year 2000. And at mm. that convention, there was some pretty big names there. And wow, one of them was Lou Ferrigno. And I just happened to do wow. Bell County Comic-Con with him in, um, I think it was last July or August, August, I believe. And 
And I was just sitting across there, you know, across from him eating dinner. And there he is again, 20 something years later. And I'm like, well, here we are. I don't know if you remember San Diego in 2000, you know, it's like, (laughs) and then some of them, yeah, some make the rounds. And, you know, just recently I did a local convention where I met a big star of a friend. Well, my friend now kind of, but I've, I've always had a fascination for uh, Mel Brooks in the the movie Bla- uh, Blazing Saddles, uh-huh, and I, I met Burton Gilliam, and he's like Lyle. He's like, and he was in Paper Moon, and he's mm-hmm. actually lives in this area. Mm-hmm. He's eighty three years old, and I was just blown away. He was literally like right across from me, and then like we all got to be friends with each other because it was a really small con. So it's just neat to uh, have social media available, so we can all kind of keep in tra- you know keep track of everybody, and sometimes we cross paths with you know these these same people mm-hmm. i know there's richard epcar there's steve bloom there's rob paulson there's some other ones that i'm hoping to appear with uh as soon as um january of next year 2022 so um, i'm already starting to book i'm getting phone calls um nice. the buzz is out everyone's ready Hell to yeah. do this they want people people want to get out and and get as close to back to normal as possible as soon mm-hmm. as possible so yeah. um people have been antsy for too long mm-hmm. being shut down and worried and wearing the mask and you know um i think things are you know it's slowly coming back i mean who would have known how 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 crazy this pandemic was going to be and how difficult it was going to be for so many people all mm-hmm. over the world but um yeah it's slowly making its way back and i mean i'm ready to go i've those were that was a year and a half of just almost like crickets for me with what yeah. I do. What I do is oh, yeah. around people face yeah. to face. I'm wanting to mm-hmm. shake hands. I'm wanting to fist bump. I'm wanting to hug the babies. And so this was just really rough on people, people, people. We, it's like we're, we got to have our people. Yeah. You know, we're a social people. Mm-hmm. We, we need mm-hmm. others around yeah. us, some more than others, some less. But so, yeah, I'm ready. I'm full on booking now. I, I, I have a few set in stone and then I have a few that are in the works and uh i'm looking ahead and hoping next year's better than ever yeah, yeah. i'm 100 percent. everybody yeah everybody yeah. wants just, to we're ready to have some good times you know some yeah. just some steady upward trends you know yeah, some positive some normality yes yeah. yeah, some no, positive i 100 agree with you on that because i know um you know that there were some wrestling promotions that were still running during the pandemic and you know it was mm. very hard wrestling in an arena or you know a building and like no fans being in the building at all you know what i'm saying I, yeah i feel like uh when you wrestle in front of the fans it's like they give you that energy you know what they I'm do you, you feed off of them and yes, when there's nobody infectious. in the building it's kind of like you're just in the ring with your opponent and that's it now of course people are watching online but it's definitely not the same thing and i'm sure that you yeah. did some of the virtual cons. I know a lot of voice yeah. actors and actors did yeah. that. And it's cool talking yeah. to people just like how we're doing right now. But it's like you said, it's just like actually like being there, seeing people in person, giving the fist bumps, the high fives, like all of that goes a long way, especially yes. when you have people who grew up watching you. And mm-hmm. it's just like they can actually come to the con and just be like, oh, you know, I've been a huge fan all my life. I can't believe yeah. that I'm finally meeting you. So I totally, yeah. agree. I totally agree with you on that. Now, I wanted to take it back because, you know, you said that you're a singer, you've always loved music, you've always loved performing. And we've had voice actors up here who are musicians as well. And, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that they would tell us is being a musician, being into music is something that helped them get into voice acting because they knew all the cues and the blips and all of that stuff. So I want to ask you, when you got into voice acting like did music help you as well when it came to doing everything because you were already a performer oh yeah i mean not just the the i mean not just the voice and using the vote you know the the vocal the the vocal cords which i'd been doing my whole life and you know as a little girl i was constantly in trouble for talking in class (laughs) i'm like y'all i'm practicing for my (laughs) career don't you know that you know uh i'm teasing but um yeah, no, I mean, you know, I've been using my voice um, and I, I was a mimic. Like I, 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 I was just already naturally doing, doing it as a child. Like before I knew that there was 
voice acting careers and you know i knew there were voices i hear voices on the cartoons and the tv shows and things like that but i didn't put two and two together until i got older and started to realize that there's this whole profession of right. voice acting and you know i would like i said i would make up my own character voices and when we were little kids we'd have like little cassette players and we would um come Record up with characters and me and my friends yeah mm. and me and my friends would come up with these shows and then i'd even write the theme song and we you know hit record and that was it and then and that's what we did i did in my spare time i mean i was just fascinated with it as as young as five or six um my dad would have us record on these little microphones in the stereo and um so i would sing songs um and put on like put on little shows and that was just that was my escape that was my healthy escape and so once i got older and started performing in anything and everything from plays to musicals to drill team pom-pom talent shows community theater that majored in drama in college i joined my first show band at 18 uh almost 19 and then that was it i didn't finish to get my i thought i'd get my degree but i didn't go back because i was i was hooked i was like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna do this and i was able to make a living at it so i traveled the world mostly united states but and did sing r b soul jazz motown oldies um nice. mostly oldies 50s to the 90s costumes three girl singers it was kind of like a cover band kind of like well we were a cover band but it was b50 it's like a b52s kind of band we had the right. costumes and the crazy hair mm -hmm. uh styles and crazy makeup and stuff and i got really involved in the costuming especially since i stayed so long i was in the band um, almost 20 years so in between all of that i met some of the musicians behind some of the programs that were taking place at Funimation and that's where I met the producer who invited me to audition to come out and be one of the the, the voiceover uh, voice actors for this uh, Dragon Ball Z which I knew nothing about at the time but um, I had right. done a little bit of work with Chuck E. Cheese and I had done some Hell in the Hens uh, vocal parts for a short time and so I don't know if uh, the producer heard something i guess he probably heard something animated in my voice because it's kind of that it's kind of naturally there so it comes really easy for me to do like character voices kind of like over the top you know uh babies crying and women screaming <laughs> and then of course east kai oh my it's crazy voice you know and <laughs> that came crazy that was out of the blue on that one i didn't uh i didn't see that one coming but um I was asked to try that voice and i just gave him a crazy wacky east kai voice and they loved it so <laughs> There's another little small role that I was able to mm -hmm. uh, to cover, and that was fun. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it all went. You know, just being immersed in the industry and then having that sense of timing. I mean, ever since I was just a little kid, you know, I was singing and dancing, taking dance classes, ballet, tap. So having that sense of timing and rhythm when it came time to dub and actually match the flaps, the music definitely helped. And it mm -hmm. also helped me in quick memorization of a line when i really tried to get into a line uh, as we did line for line i tried to memorize it because that way i could close my eyes and then when it was time to record it was like memorizing lyrics but yeah. on the spot you right. know and and being able to improvise from, by being a stage and a show performer uh definitely the confidence level was there i mean i could just go in there and just try to knock it out and follow direction and if they liked it they liked it we moved on so yeah, yeah, music and music's just part of who I am. I mean, it's just yeah, I hear that part one. of a lot. I mean, whether people are performers or, or or musicians in any kind of a way or singer songwriters, I mean, everybody I know has favorite music. Their favorite music. I mean, I don't of know course. anybody that. No, I don't really care for music. You know, I mean, I, everybody <laughs> I know has some kind of music. There's radio in the background or something on their playlist, you know, or on uh, yeah. in their car, something to listen to. So. Yeah, music for me is very therapeutic. Yep. Yeah, I mean, music's a... just... Go ahead, thanks. No, no, I was going to probably say the same thing you were going to say, D. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say that music is so relatable, regardless of your mood and stuff. And it can just... You know, the lyrics, the the beat, the rhythm, it can just help you get through things, whether it's working out or a tough day, a long day at work, yeah. you know, anything. So music can invigorate amazing. you. Yeah, if you ever run into somebody who doesn't... They say they don't like music, you got to get out of there. So, that doesn't get out of there. So, I don't, I've <laughs> never met. I mean, whether they enjoy it, yeah, to it, or going to see live entertainment, yeah, big, 
that's big for me as I really um, being a live musician and being, you know, having to make a career out of it and, and, a, and a living out of it. Yeah, uh, man, we all get it. It's like we yep. go and we support each other. We promote each other on online. It's like, come see my friends, come support local mu live music. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of time and in, 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 in hours and years of, uh, you know, invest investing in your craft and then being mm -hmm. able to perform in front of an audience is literally some people's uh bread and butter i mean that's like what's paying the bills and yeah so for sure. uh, yeah but i mean i'm just very grateful that i had this ear but you have to be able to hear ear. you have to have an amazing musical <laughs> ear and if you don't have that you you don't even know if you're on pitch or not so mm. you know i i would i consider my entire childhood was a dress rehearsal for when i'm <laughs> right now. yeah you right. know, because I was just doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, even when it was time to go to bed or something, it's like Stephanie. You know, it's time to go to bed. Like you need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> you be quiet. Like your parents are like, stop singing. Quit stop. singing your songs. Uh, enough. Time for sleepy enough. time. You know, and then I'd be ah, time for sleepy time. You know, and then I'd make a song about that. So, <laughs> I don't, you know how yeah. kids are. They have so much energy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's been a healthy, a uh, healthy distraction for me. One of the I best. Just had a question for you miss stephanie what what is the name of your band well i have my own band now called moonglass it's a trio moonglass. Uh, I'm I sorry, like it's a, well it's actually a duo trio slash quartet but they're all members of the band that i performed with at the windstar world casino in thackerville oklahoma we were called the high rollers which is a casino we were the Sick. breakfast band for the seniors so anybody over 50 mm -hmm. uh, could come in in the morning and have this big giant live band on this giant stage it was like a big concert stage and we had a, a roughly two thousand seniors coming in every morning wow you know we're talking seven eight in the morning so we had to get our butts up and i'll oh, say wow. how how is drive to oklahoma and yeah <laughs> twice a week mm. but it was oh what a what a godsend that was it was just a miraculous magical job that we all just we cry over it. I mean, all good things must come to an end, but we were there four mm -hmm. years mm. house band there. So uh, all of those guys became like my family. And I was, we were carpooling together, having breakfast with seniors every week, still being able to, to do our gigs on the weekend. And I was right. able to kind of do my voice acting throughout the week session work. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, these guys were like my family and then to work with the best of the best like that and to have this, everybody be so intensely amazing and talented at what they uh shared with this entourage mm -hmm. and for everybody to come together like that and just to be so professional um man i just got really spoiled and so i'm like you know what i don't want this to end guys we need to keep doing this and so yeah the key uh my guitar player bass player and drummer we stayed intact mm -hmm. and uh we have people that can come fill in here and there but those core especially me the bass player and the guitar player we stay we're pretty much on every gig we we don't really like to stray from that we like to kind of keep oh, it yeah. intact. If we can mm -hmm. all do it we do it mm -hmm. you know for sure and so now i'm i'm booking holiday gigs at uh the mall i grew up in there's called music city mall in lewisville and we're i uh, very very happy to finally get into that circle uh because they provide music every day uh, right. in mm. various parts of the mall as people are strolling through and with it being the holidays i've got mm -hmm. some wow. of those coming up so all my guys are all pumped up and excited to work again gonna get That's a lot awesome. of traffic during the holidays too yeah there's gonna be Damn santa right. it's gonna be cheesy cheesy which oh is yeah i love all that cheese family friendly <laughs> lots of you know cute kids and families coming out to get their pictures done and mm -hmm. they don't and have i'm to learning work. how to play keys like I, I took piano for like six years growing up but i never thought i would play in a company in a band and so i'm in a little duo now that i'm playing keys and it's like i still can't wrap my head around it because I, I and i'm teaching it too but i've never been a keyboardist like i've never considered myself a piano player yes, i mean i just played right. for fun and i did the little recitals and the competitions and things like that but now i'm actually <laughs> teaching these kids and a lot of the and well really of all ages and it's like i need to stay ahead of these guys so i'm taking <laughs> lessons now i'm taking uh lessons with my bass player dan bradford he's been teaching me all these different chords and what they're called and and why they're called what they're called because like it's it's mm -hmm. stuff i've already knew i could hear it but couldn't identify exactly what it was so now that i'm taking my lessons i'm yeah. learning how to stay ahead of my students so that i can be a better teacher for them yeah. that's right and i think i, I learned that awesome. music there i think mm -hmm. it's awesome that you know when it comes to being 
and a profession that you're in, like when it comes to music, for example. And it's just like, it's always an evolving door where it's just like, you're constantly learning. You know what I'm saying? And st- yeah. because some people, it's just like, they feel like that they get to this point the spot and, and that's it. That's it. No. But it's just like, it doesn't, it doesn't like you could be in the business for 50 years. And it's just like, you know, you should always be willing to learn because like new yes. stuff comes out and, you know, Trav, yes. like he's our music guy. And I, I love when you said that you had the ear because like, that's something that we always say about Trav. Trav's a mix engineer. So I'll yeah. pass the mic to Trav and Trav, if yeah. you have a music question that you would like to ask her, the right. ball's in your hand. That's the thing is I know what I'm, I know what I can do and I know what I'm good at, but when it, but when the tables were all of a sudden turned and then I'm teaching. Right. It was like, it wasn't easy for me because I, I, yeah. I had already been doing it my whole life and I've been performing. I know what to do when I get on a stage. I know how to choreograph. I know how to do costuming. I know how to train and mentor young singers. I knew how to do all that because I'd already done it just in mm-hmm. life. It was like happening every day. And then doing the sessions and the jingles and parodies and writing. I was immersed in all of these different things that I absolutely loved. And the creative process is my favorite. Um but then when it came time to like, hey, man, would you, what do you think about teaching, teaching, teaching? Well, I love kids and I love music. So you put those two together. Well, why not? You know, and it's something I can do during the week. It keeps me on my toes, keeps me humble, keeps me. Um, it fills that void with uh, wanting to be around children. I've always mm-hmm. wanted children, was unable to have mine. And um, it's just how I fill that void of both, you know, learning and evolving in music it keeps me on my game. It yep. keeps me on my toes. And now that I'm yep. doing that and there's something to do every day now, I'm just in better shape than I ever have been mentally, physically, nice. emotionally. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I've, I'm very grateful. I feel like I'm kind of on top of the world, but I am absolutely not done. I have actually, I think in my own way, kind of limited myself in thinking that this is really all I'm ever going to be, you know, and right. getting through some childhood trauma and t- uh, PTSD and some things like that here, especially over the past six or seven years has really opened my eyes. I think it's also also just getting older, like mm-hmm. um, living more life, having more, you know, just having a sense of maturity that really kind of hits you when you kind of like, OK, I'm not 25, 30, 35, 40 anymore. I'm, I'm getting up there mm-hmm. you know, I'm well over half my you know half of my life i mean so not to not to say it in a negative way but to say it in a way that's like empowering it's like yeah don't don't close your doors don't limit yourself because it's never too late to Mm -hmm. learn something new Mm -hmm. to try something new to see what you you know maybe like when you're self-employed and you're kind of juggling and some people do things for as a hobby well then they might find that they Mm -hmm. really enjoy it and they start doing you know freelancing you know or that's why I waited tables for a while. So when during the pandemic, I got into cooking, I got into some things that were completely foreign to me, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, you know, if you put your mind to it and you're you know, stubborn, like I am stubborn, uh, <laughs> I'm like kind of determined, you know, to to get it right and do a good job. And I'm, I'm the first to say, listen, if I'm not a good music teacher or you feel like a, it's not a good match, I'd rather be a better teacher and get and hand them off to someone or Maybe I'm better at piano. Maybe I'm better at singing, but maybe I'm not the best voice teacher. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. right, I'm, yeah. I'm just trying different things, and I'm just not. I'm just not limiting myself anymore. I'm. I did too much of that for for too long. You know, I I've kind of pounded myself down and said this is, this is it for you. But it's it's really not. I mean, I feel like I'm. My eyes are open op- open more wide than they really ever have, to anything and everything. Um, not just career, but to uh, spiritual life and. Um, helping others and i don't know just i I don't know i feel like in a way i've been kind of given the opportunity to mother a lot of fans and kids through my work and that's a very 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 special thing for me because i lost my mom when i was young she was only 51 i hadn't even made it uh anywhere near out of my 20s yet so i feel like i'm kind of living her legacy now because i'm she was very nurturing and kind and friendly and loving and I feel like I've just by having her in my life as a child and growing up, she was really my oasis. So I'm finding that also through this platform of being this voice actor, of these iconic characters, it's like been a, a a really awesome sounding board for me to utilize that to reach people who've had similar struggles, mm-hmm. whether it be bullying in school. Uh, I was a new girl a lot, moved around every two years, um, never quite fit in. 
um it's like kind of a way for me to like be a positive role model and inspire mm -hmm. people yeah. kids that do get bullied or feel like they're not good enough or they have a self-esteem issues and things like that so i feel like this is kind of my way of becoming a mother in that sense of the word yeah. kind of taking care of my peeps you know yep, um, right. people that have helped me uh give back now that you know now that i've come out of some really crazy insane storms it's like time to kind of give back to those who are struggling mm -hmm. and when you're in I good would, shape you kind of give back to those who helped you when you were really that's really right down. that's right i mean i, I always feel like especially with a lot of our guests um we hear from time to time uh, more often than not but it's about using your platform you know to help mm -hmm. those that you can and with yeah. you being like you know multi-talented you know um it's you just get to reach so much so many more people and i think that's awesome you know? thank you yeah i mean you know growing up and stuff it didn't do me any favors because uh you know just singing dancing and acting and just doing it just because that's what i did it's just what i loved was uh not very well received with a lot of the kiddos around me especially since i moved and i was new so i just would come in and sing and dance and do my thing but then yeah. it was really really not well well oh, accepted that's... when you're the new girl but yeah. through Touches those experiences thing. yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah because you, you can come across they... as, as like yeah. um conceited or like show yeah, well sometimes bully right, i yeah. mean you know all bullies you know if they figure out like this person can do something i can't mm -hmm. you know like me growing up for a long yeah. time i skateboarded in middle and high school and you know obviously being yeah. african-american that wasn't normal you know mm -hmm. a lot of you know so there's a it, lot of it jealousy happens. it's hard yeah, you just gotta but you just gotta be yeah exactly and you just gotta be who you are and hopefully those people grow up and you know yeah. realize yeah, i think that gosh. happens more often than not too like it's man i was immature for you know yeah we were all children we were all kids exactly. we were all teens we all went through all of those growing pains and you know for me you know i i kind of felt like the ugly duckling but um i knew i could sing i'd been singing my whole life so mm -hmm. i kind of embraced that more than anything and then i got in with you know a good group of, of uh, friends actually through my church i did a lot of church stuff and uh youth groups and stuff and that became a really big foundation for me to develop a sense of values and morals that i was able to take into adulthood mm. but i mean i can you know i'll crack a joke with the the boys you know i was on the road with a bunch of guys and and other girls but you know i could i can hang out with the with the boys too and being <laughs> yeah, a voice of a, of a boy i got to live be able to hang out with everybody i, I like yeah. i was saying yeah i'm able to live vicariously through the boy you know through this care these characters <laughs> are boys it's like yeah yeah you I, know I, hmm? I wanted to piggyback off of, you know, since we're talking about bullying and whatnot and, yeah. you know, kind of like how D was just saying, you know, growing up and being African-American and being a skateboarder, he got picked on. You know, I used to get picked on for my weight when I was younger. And I'll say that yeah. when you watch Dragon Ball Z, for example, and, you know, you voicing Gohan and, you know, just seeing like his character development from when he was a kid until he became a teenager. Yeah and you see how he stuck up for people how he always wanted yep. to help people and you know i would yes. watch that and mm -hmm. like that would inspire me to like because it's like i always say i'm the number one hero because i'm always helping people i'm always you know sticking yeah. up for people when they're being bullied so it's just like you yeah. know you watch these animes and cartoons when you're a kid and it's like you mm -hmm. know i just want to say thank you because it's like you know you did help inspire me and motivate me when i was a kid and it's like you're still doing that now by i know, hope so you know i mean you just said so you know when you go to yeah. the cons and you meet these people and the kids that you're I'm teaching doing it and whatnot, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah and it's helping me it's because mm -hmm. it's helping me see that there's you get lost in life sometimes you know for whatever reason things happen or you go through tough times and then you kind of lose who you are you lose what your purpose is and for me my newfound purpose especially over these past two or three years has been the work I've already done and like you said you know having that as a platform to reach others and if man if that's all I do from here on out well then okay you know it's like I make I'm 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 fulfilling I'm fulfilled I'm finding peace mm -hmm. I'm finding joy in in exuding something positive back into the 
the universe, not to get all weird. Some people are, you know, are not into that spiritual thing or whatever, but like, I really feel like it, there's energy. There's just energy. And when you put out good energy, it's going to come back and you're going to feel that's true. Uh, you're going to be able to sleep at night. You're going to have peace. And when, when you don't have peace, you don't have really anything. Cause then you kind of lose your mental faculties and you just don't, you can't function. You can't sleep. You can't live with maybe poor decisions you made or, right. um, you know, and that stuff, that stuff will always catch up with you. So I think it's just a matter of living in the moment, making the next best decision you can make, uh, thinking outside of yourself, getting outside of your crazy, insane brain and just allowing your natural true nature kind of flow and when you quit resisting and trying to control everything like i want this part or i want to try out for that part or i want to when you let go of all that everything just falls where it needs to go right. that's what i'm a firm firm believer in that it's a truth that i have become to be uh known to be self-evident i guess nice. Using my big words. That's right. <laughs> Making my straight A's in school, all that studying. Mm -hmm. I, I do want to ask, though, going back to you landing the spot at Funimation, when y'all first dubbed this anime and you see it on television, what what is that like for you? That was a special moment for me because the first time I saw this work come together, where because we dubbed separately line to line. Mm -hmm. and it was all fixed in post and then when it finally came uh there's something different about the company saying hey here's a d or actually it was a vhs tape there here's a vhs tape of <laughs> you in this show or whatever and then uh -huh. of course you put it in the vhs tape you know and you fast forward or you watch it or whatever but there's something different about when you just turn on the tv and it's cartoon network and then you hear your voice on the television mm -hmm. right going mm -hmm. out to wherever and whoever and however and for me that first moment I shared with my mother and my mom nice. was fighting her illness, uh, leukemia, cancer. Uh, and she was in and out of her treatments and chemo. And so we were able to share that moment together. And I was like, wow, this feels weird. Like, it's kind of like also when I would record in the studio and then hear your song, like either on the radio or there's just something magical about that moment. And to be able to share that with my mother and be able to, you know, just really start this propel into this career as a voice actor character voice actress and share that with her was you know really special so it's amazing it's crazy and you know it's another thing that happened early on it was when i started dubbing it was probably early 1999 early like january i went to uh with my show band in 2000 a year and a half after i started dubbing i saw dragon ball z on tv in italy <laughs> and i saw and heard the Gohan, the Italian Gohan. I was uh -huh. like, this is crazy. That's when I kind of realized, <laughs> okay, this show is way more popular than I mm -hmm. even knew. Mm -hmm. And there was, you know, um, souvenir shops with Dragon Ball Z hoodies and manga and all this stuff in Italy, France. I mean, and then when I first got invited to um, Australia, New Zealand, that was in like 02. And then I came back in 04. That's when I also realized that it had transcended the the states and that you know it right. originated in Japan of course but like for for me to f find out that it was really all over i mean that's when it first kind of hit it was like wow and for me to be invited to cons now is just so humbling it's like wow this is great like mm -hmm. yeah let's do this you know <laughs> get out there and make magic with the make memories with these amazing people all over the place and other like i said i'm meeting other guests i'm meeting other vendors i'm like really i'm like buds with all like the artist alley folks that like all the the artists and we mm. like see each other we're in touch on facebook we watch each other's families and cheer each other on through victories in life and you know, there's a lot of mothering to be done i'm finding that out like people need love people need likes on their facebook pages you know they right. need people need, there's people that are suffering that you know are trying to get through like i said we're all just trying to survive and so if i can help someone out and gives them some uh attention and there's a lot of you know motherless daughters out there that lose right. their mom when they're young i mean it's like there's a lot there's there's so much need you know animals yep. need homes i mean mm -hmm. all that stuff so i can be the mom 
I'm actually a, an anime mom to a lot of people. That's what I, I was just about to say. Yeah. yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. you are. Yeah, we hear that from you know some of the guests that we've had up here, where it's just like, it's yeah, just like they're anime moms. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You know, I, I wanted to piggyback off of something that you had said about you know being invited to the cons and just seeing like how big the anime is. Yeah. Um, I had did a Q&A with Diane Pershing. I don't know if you know who that is, but uh, she voiced Poison Ivy on Batman the Animated Series. And oh. she recently just started doing the cons. And she was just like, she never knew that Batman the Animated Series was like this big deal. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So of course, yeah. we grew up watching it, but it's the same thing with you when it comes to Dragon Ball Z. It's just like, you knew that it was popular, but you didn't know right. that it was this big. So no. I want to I wanna ask you, when you were recording for Gohan or even Goku on Dragon Ball, like, were there ever any moments in the series where, you know, you just felt like a certain type of way, like you were excited or you were sad? Because I know we've had some voice actors up here where it's like they talked about characters that they voiced and it either motivated them, it made them feel sad just because of their struggles and ordeals. Do you have any stories from when you recorded? Yeah, I mean, you know, my favorite part of it was when I was cast as Kid Goku and I got to be this fearless, care, you know, carefree, sweet, cute little boy that was innocent and didn't know mm-hmm. the difference between a girl and a boy who didn't understand what money meant. And then so and then to have all those moments where he was just as innocent as could be. It's like it just took me back to when I was a kid mm-hmm. and I could like be this this innocent, unscathed, unjaded kiddo that just grabs a fish, p- puts him over his shoulder and goes home and makes dinner. And then he meets Bulma and then it's just even more funny. And it's just the um, the comedic stuff, the stuff that makes people laugh was very refreshing for me. And even just to go back on YouTube and kind of watch some of these scenes. And because I've been doing some of the conventions with some of the other OG mm-hmm. Dragon Ball Z ladies, like um, the voice of Bulma, Tiffany Vollmer, Linda Young, voice of Frieza, uh, Cynthia Krantz, voice of Chi Chi. Those are kind of my those are that's my clan like we're like the that's your crew. og dragon ball z ladies crew yeah, yeah. And so we're 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 starting to do these conventions <laughs> together and so there's there's a lot of that cross promotion so that when fans come or make a trip out they can get multiple autographs or they can you know visit with you know all of us or two of right. us instead of just one and so that's been then been really kind of fun here lately as i and and to be a part of this OG thing, it's like I feel so cool. Like I'm finally fitting in somewhere in life. You know, it's kind of like that's my niche. You know. Mm-hmm. Now let me yeah. ask you something. Uh, when you first heard OG, what did you think that it meant? I I didn't know because I <laughs> I thought it meant original, but I was like that it can't does. be. Yeah, but we somebody have... says gangster, it, old gangster. I mean, yeah, original gangster. I mean, you know, like. Yeah, the OG. We, the OG yeah, like, like we had a uh, we had John Swayze up here, and oh, you he, did. He, I know him. We did said, an interview with him. <laughs> what did he say? He said he thought it's still for old old goat. goat. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's great. I don't so know. It's, just, it's interesting just hearing this, and uh, you know something else I wanted to bring up too because we had Linda Young up here as well, and you know she performs, she sings, and yeah, I we have ask, a lot in common. Have, yes, have you guys ever sang any songs together? Any, we, any you know, we we talked about it and we yeah we ended up in england like i want to say 2018 we were in england and we uh we were guests there with some other dragon ball z uh voice voice actors and we talked about it i'm like you know because the more i followed her on her social media and same with me uh because i sang with some big bands as well off and mm-hmm. on through the years right. and so i you know i definitely support her and what she's doing I, I i did some stuff with an elvis tribute band several elvis tribute bands and being from memphis tennessee that was like a big one for me because i grew up around the whole elvis thing and i was a little girl when he passed away and so um yeah i mean we 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 actually were at kamea con this past summer in Allen, Texas, which is DFW, Dallas Fort Worth. And we did a little interview. It's Anime Adventures with um Yeah. Elise Bowman. And I had done some stuff with her previously because she was um the voice of Pan in Dragon Ball mm-hmm. GT. So we had known each other from some of those events and signings. But um we the three of us did a little interview. It's about to be released. It was uh right. it's being, you know, it's all being done in post and it's it's supposed to be it might even be out, I don't know, maybe even as early as this week, but she and I just said, let's just sing something unrehearsed. 
if there's a moment in this interview. And we did, and we did like this little boogie wiggy boogie boy, the Andrew sisters, or gosh, I don't know. I can't remember. I'm getting old, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we just did. Your name is Drop a Man, and I've got to go away. You know, we just, yeah, we yeah, were just uh-huh. doing this cute thing, and it just felt. It just fell together. It was super cute. So nice. I've always told her, you know, we need to next time we know we're doing a convention together or an, or an appearance, let's get a microphone and let's, you know, sing, sing a song or sing a theme song. Um, You know, I know this, this theme song from Dragon Ball and sometimes I'll sing that at the conventions and just get something going on with some harmony and like, you know, put, put on a little show. Mm-hmm. And, and a like lot of the that. voice actors don't realize some of these trivial things about us that you know this person is a singer this one has a band this some of the voice actors had improv troops or had done comedy right. you know um yeah there's there's a lot of stuff that the fan i never thought in a million years that voice acting this character these characters would put me on the map like it has and mm-hmm. singing didn't that's what's like crazy because because singing and and was my first love and the singing and the mm-hmm. music but then I, I didn't realize until i got older that wow i mean because i'll just do funny voices around the house or like i'll mimic right. things i hear mm-hmm. you know whether it be king of the hill or but that you know and mm-hmm. simpsons and i mean i've been mimicking this stuff for years but didn't realize i really was really all that good at it you know mm-hmm. I was doing so, it. You just never know. Right? Prank so, phone calling my friends, you know. Just shot. You know, <laughs> calling and ordering pizzas for no, I'm kidding. I mean, <laughs> my my you stuff that would have killed me for that. But uh <laughs> you know, call I'm I'm a friend of mine had a job as a sales rep and I called her and made up some voice and said that I was looking to to get a you know home security whatever she was selling and then by the end of the message you know i gave her my number and she's like ah i thought i had a lead just... so and that's that's <laughs> my way of you know embracing uh humor and mm-hmm. laughter and that that's gotten me through a lot of hard times as well i think it's a lot of people is you can just break down those walls and laugh mm-hmm. and you know cry it out laugh it out get those emotions out i think it's a it's a really amazing release for a lot of people they say laughter is the best medicine it is right mm-hmm. so you Please, know Brad, so. you had a question you were about to say yeah but now i can't remember it <laughs> yeah <laughs> there that it's gone it was there but it was gone now hey, yeah, that, hey that's what happens squirrel oh no that's Something, what it was okay shiny <laughs> so let me ask you then because you kind of filled in on some okay ko stuff yeah and, is is did you come in after the voice actor that portrays them throughout most of the series i came because before you could actually mimic? okay so you came in first that's a good question though because i have been asked to, to mimic from time mm-hmm. to time mm-hmm. in fact mm-hmm. when i first got cast as gohan there were some times when i wouldn't be needed to come in for a while but based on the deadlines and so sometimes it'd be a month or two before i'd come back to voice the next episode or whatever else was the next thing right. and so i they would just play my previous work in my headphones and i would literally mimic mimic myself right. like almost immediately because i and then i was like oh okay and then i would just do it and then when it came time to do some video games some of the directors would would literally just they would give me the line which some actors don't like that i i didn't mind at all when someone would say okay now do yeah 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 and then I'll just yeah, come back yeah, with yeah. a kick, 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 you know, even uh-huh. if it's just that they do it in their voice, but then I know to do that with that rhythm in Gohan's voice. Mm-hmm. And so, but no, but that's an interesting question. Lakewood Plaza Turbo was a pilot that Ian Quarterly had been working on. And he was a Dragon Ball Z fan. So he was in LA putting this together, trying to get this on TV at Cartoon Network. Right. So he hunted me down and I did a lot of those, those voice those uh they they were actually shorts at the time mm-hmm. uh my voice was the one hit that he had selected for ko and the show was eventually changed from lakewood plaza turbo to okko okay, let's be heroes so mm-hmm. i did voice uh in the pilot and that was probably around 2014 and then was called to voice the character at Cartoon Network. I actually was flown out there a couple times and nice. met the other cast members and and then yes, yeah, some s- decisions were made, you know, that's that's a, that's the hardest part uh, for me and in this industry is you could be replaced or for any reason, nothing even personal. If somebody just makes a decision, well, she's not in LA, she's in Dallas. Let's just get somebody local. And that's kind of what right. happened. Mm. Um and to just be be professional about it and just really try not to take it personally because it 
a lot of times it has zero to do with your talent. It has to do with some logistics deal yeah. or logistics right. or money or budget or you know something something like that or you know you look at them wrong i mean seriously it's like right, right. Hey, that can happen in wrestling too i mean they yeah say, if you don't run in the pack people's hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because if you don't shake the hand you never know what's gonna happen but you know yeah. to keep it to keep it on this subject because you know when we had linda up here we had yeah. asked her the question because when dragon ball z had came back and it was dragon ball kai and she didn't yeah. come back as frieza she right. had told us that the reason why was because Frieza was voiced by a man in Japan. So they wanted Frieza to be voiced by a man and the uh, redub or the new the new series for Dragon Ball. So I want to ask yeah. you, like, yeah, uh, what happened with you voicing Gohan on Dragon Ball Z? Because it's like they kind of switched up with a couple yeah. of other voice actors as well. Like they what, did. What was that about? Well, I didn't know anything about it, to be honest. I mean, I found out from my fans when the show was released in February of 2011. And um, mm. man, my computer at the time, you know, it wasn't as what it is now. Social media is way bigger and so many different formats and <laughs> TikTok and Instagram, you know. Right. But um, my fans were like, what happened? What happened? I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You know, I'm just singing in my band and doing all these things and planning a wedding and doing, you know, um, all these things were going on. And I thought, the show was over. I thought that my work was complete and thus they were going to be doing more games or movies. And then hopefully I was going to be considered for other roles and other projects. Well, when that came out, the fans went crazy and they just were bombarding me with emails and what happened? And oh my gosh, she doesn't sound anything like you. And just, and all these, just all these comments. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. So I did some research and um, yeah, I mean, there were several of us that were um, replacing Kai and I found some solace in knowing I wasn't the only one because at first I thought it was just me. I thought, you know, mm, what, right. what did I do? You know, did I make somebody mad or did I, my kids don't play with your kids or what, you know, what exactly happened? Cause that's like the, <laughs> me, that's like the bullied me. That's like, Oh, yeah. what did I do? You know, they, everybody hates me, you know, but you know, decisions get made. Um, and you know, I, and I'm kind of pushed out. I'm in the outskirts now. I mean, I don't even work there anymore. I don't, I don't get called in. I don't go to audition. I, you know, I, I I'm still kind of trying to wrap my brain around that because I have so many voices that aren't being utilized. Like I'm constantly coming mm. up with these character right. voices and these, um, it's a challenge for myself to mm. do completely unique voices that sound nothing alike. And so if I feel like I can do that, I'd really like to be cast in something. But lately, what I've been doing is not just revamping the music and teaching, but I've also been uh, sending out auditions for possibly getting a new agent. Um, I did get cast in a project in Croatia. It's a video game. I played like five different characters. Two of them were children, a boy and a girl. Um, so I am getting back into it. I'm, I'm dancing around some, you know, some projects now. So I'm hoping that mm -hmm. that next year brings a lot more opportunities for me to be utilized in this industry and be able to, you know, dabble in all these different voices and things in my head and be able to be able to express myself. Because I don't know if you guys also knew that um, some of us back in the day were um, cast to sing some of the animation themes. Yeah. And so yeah. back mm. way back in like the late 90s, I worked with Carl Finch from Brave Combo. They're a, an award winning a Grammy award winning polka band out of Denton. They've been together for 40, 50 years now. Um, I was in, uh, involved in working with them and then some side projects. We actually did a whole album called The Cookies, which I'm still in the process of trying to get out on YouTube and get out on all of these different, you know, internet ways to share streaming music. platforms and stuff. Uh, CD Baby, yeah. And so, because uh, it was done a long time ago and was never released, and it's some really good stuff, really good original music. And during that time, I was able to work with Carl Finch in um, producing and taking Japanese lyrics for these these um, animation themes, anime themes, putting them into a format that made sense in English, and then we recorded them. So I was able to do some of that. So that was fun to see that voice, the voice acting and the singing cross at Funimation because right. I was able to do Kitty Grade opening and closing theme case closed and then Yu Yu Hakusho we did uh Sayonara Bye Bye I don't know if you guys even right. know what this stuff is yeah. but oh yeah oh, of course we do the yeah, two fans do. know they yeah they've heard it and they're like a lot of them don't realize that so yeah. I don't even know if they I don't think they credit some of us singers on some of the they didn't and and yeah, that's what I think we got that's the hard part yeah yeah that's the crazy thing because it's like you hear these songs and it's just like Wonder you don't know 
yeah, you don't know who the the singer is, and then you also hear different versions. I'm I'm mad I can't remember the voice actress who voiced Yukina on Yu Yu Hakusho, but I just found out that she has a version of her singing Sayonara Bye Bye. And oh, cool! You know, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's yeah. interesting. Thanks, thankful to you know YouTube being a thing where it's just like you can yeah. go up there and you can you know hear voice actors and actors mm -hmm. uh, actresses mm -hmm. do this type of thing. But yeah. you know, I, I totally hope that, you know, with all the anime that's out now, because there's, you know, anime coming out left and right, that we can start hearing you and stuff again. Yeah. Because, like, you're an OG. You're Gotta a legend. pound on that door. Like, I'm still here. Like, I'm local. <laughs> I'm ready to come back, you know, uh, whether it be Walla, Side Voices, you know, whatever it is, you know, I mean, the company's grown so big. I don't know exactly even how to get back into the into the melting pot of talent, but I'm definitely here and I'm, I'm willing to definitely get back into it. I miss it a lot. And, um, um, yeah. And I was, uh, what, what else was I going to tell you? I was, I was on, here we go again. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. I was going to say something. <laughs> well, snowballing. But, um, yeah. I was actually able to produce some of those animation things and I, Oh, and I did some, uh, I was very, they were trying to kind of the people that were casting these, uh, singers to voice these animation themes wanted some of them to sound different so i did do some uh some demos of some of them as well that i'd like nice. to get out there but not necessarily released you know right. with that particular show but it was a very very cool learning experience for me to like get involved in the singer songwriter process and also behind the mic directing other singers and that's right. where i think i've channeled a lot of what i'm doing now with these young singers teaching them how to sing how to stand use their you know how to breathe correctly and hold out long notes and vibrato mm -hmm. and whatever so um it's interesting it's a challenge for me but it's it's very gratifying to see that light bulb go off you know it's like the little singer like oh, oh okay i get it now you know mm -hmm. and what's cool about the school of rock where i work um a couple days a week is we put together bands and performances as if they're going to be rock stars right so what better yeah. person i mean because i at first when i was first teaching i was teaching at a school that really was had a different uh mission but having started there now that i'm in this one i was like yeah this is much better this this door needed to be open because i'm a stage performer having done it live and performed mm -hmm. live more than anywhere else this is like perfect because then i can teach them stage presence and eye contact uh, mic technique how to hold the mic you know how to move with the mic how to so yeah it's definitely a better a better job for me if i'm going to be teaching but i'm ready awesome. to get back into more more voice acting for sure i sure do miss it i do it whether people like it or not in my life it's <laughs> like around the house talking to my baby you know to my animals and you know coming up with unique sounds i've just been fascinated with the voice since i can mm -hmm. remember mm -hmm. Now, well, let me ask you this, because I know you said that you want to get back into voice acting and you did the anime stuff. Would you mind getting like more into cartoons? Because you did do OKKO. OK yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's no limits there. Um, I've even done some radio commercials. Uh, a friend of mine, my dear darling uh, bass player, extraordinary best friend, Brett, Dan Bradford has um, he works for a radio station, so he brings me in. I'm kind of in his back pocket when he needs a different voice and right. to sound different. So whenever they want something different, because a lot of these commercials will, will air on s lots of syndicated stations. So he'll need something, somebody to come in and shake it up, especially when there's a, a, a 30 or a 60 minute spot that demands character voices and yeah. not just like an announcer. Right. But, but it's all good experience. And then reading it and trying to get it to do it without a mistake, which it can be fixed in post, but like that's really good practice. And I try to get, cause I get a lot of people asking me like fans and even people that come to these conventions or they may find a way to message me on social media, ask me how some pointers or how to get into it or whatever. And so, um, you know, that's what I, I recommend is that people not only get acting training and a theater but also practice reading scripts and recording right. yourself and listening back and really tightening up your sound or what is it that's unique that you can offer and then what's your range like can you do this voice or that well you know can you do male and female can you do old elderly can you do young it's like and then if you're really really good at even just one or two things if you're really 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 good at it and you hone in on your talent you can find success in this industry if you can just get heard by the right, right. person
Mm-hmm. And it's, that's the thing is there's so much talent and there's so much talent in Dallas-Fort Worth. I mean, not this, and this is my area so I can, from my standpoint. And so a lot of people are competing for a lot of the same, mm-hmm. same, same roles. So I just, I just keep imagining, uh, like you traveling with John Candy's polka band and home alone type, of. Yeah, type of thing I, I did, and I'm Polish. Crazy so. stuff going on in the van. Oh, just- Nad- yeah, Nadalny <laughs> is Polish, so my dad's side of the family, they're all uh, great grand grandparents. Um, we're all 100 percent Polish. So, mm-hmm. so no wonder I like the polka music. And like my uh-huh. little nieces, you know, when they were little, they would we would play this this music because I I sang on a lot of their albums, and so and I noticed the that they were dancing and feeling the beat. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, I ended up at, I think I was like 21. I ended up in Pennsylvania and I just started wandering the streets because we were on tour with Fence mm-hmm. Fans and the Valiants. And I found a polka like festival and uh-huh. I started going out there and dancing with everybody. Oh my gosh. It was Having a good so much old fun. <laughs> There's a lot of Polish polka uh-huh. people up there in the, in the Northeast, you know, Rhode Island, Maine, Illinois, yeah, Ohio. Yeah. And it's like I found my home away from home with all these Polish people dancing the polka. So it's crazy where life can take you sometimes, but right. <laughs> hey, things like were different. That I mean, there was still danger and a criminal element, but this was almost 30 years ago when you, you know, could kind of yeah. wander the streets and, you know, we were using pay phones and we didn't uh-huh. have cell phones. Yeah. Good old pay phone. But hey, yeah, mom. cartoons. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. I see you. you hey, we snowball. Like, that, hey, that's what we do up here. It's mm-hmm. cool. That is it's what it's we vintage. Do. <laughs> like, my nieces came over, and we were going through all my stuff, like in my garage, and like you know, in, in storage or whatever. And we were pulling it all out, and she found all this vintage Dragon Ball Z stuff. And she she didn't know what it was when she was growing up, and now that she's twenty, one's eighteen and one's twenty two, and they're just they think it's the greatest thing. Their aunt Stephanie is the voice of Goku and go on because now they have their friends. Right, yeah. Uh, who watched it and are really into anime, and then they're like, "Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. can get her autograph." And I'm like, oh, "Take whatever uh, you want. You're my niece, you know." But we found like all these like vintage cards. We found like the Burger King wow. vintage. Um, I got. I, I still have those. those. I still have those toys. Yeah, I found some, and they were still in the little packages and stuff. Uh-huh. And she was just her eyes were bulging out of her head. She couldn't believe it. I'm like, "What? This is just stuff. It's a box of Dragon Ball Z stuff." And she was just like digging through it, like, "Oh my God, Stephanie, you don't believe how much this is worth." You should put this on eBay. Uh, and, <laughs> and I'm just like, "No, no, no. Those are just my things, you know, just posters or whatever." So it'll be nice to get settled somewhere one day soon because I'm in the process of possibly selling my house and possibly, I don't know, when I get to where I want to stay forever because I do mm-hmm. not want to move ever again because I moved my That's whole right. life. So. And I want to like deck out like my office with all my, you know, frame everything and put it all up on the wall, make it my own, you know, that's right. Have my own home studio, which I already do have one, but like whenever I I get to, yeah, yeah, we got some cool equipment here. I got to say, that's not, that's not a cheap microphone. Yeah, yeah, you know, Trav, no, you know, I know my mom have a good one. Yes, oh, that's the Vector three thousand. Yeah, Trav yeah, Trav been eyeing that thing the entire interview. Ah, see his eyes haven't moved. I, I bought this thing years ago because I wanted to voice at home and have my own little miniature oh, studio without having a, I wasn't able to have a booth. There's not room for one. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Um, like I said, Dan Bradford is my sound engineer, bass player, piano teacher, best friend, roommate, everything. So he does all of this. Like if I ever have any problems with technical stuff, he goes on, he's going to be teaching me how to edit and doing things like that's the next thing I need to do. So nice. got to make time Fine. for this stuff. Really? I mean, yeah, that's right. Time's ticking, man. We're not getting any younger. They, they say you need a hobby, and you got yeah, plenty exactly. of them, so. yes. I, that, That's Especially, right. too, because of the pandemic. And, you know, us yeah. being at home, we were able to learn so much more, you know? What Had I'm to. So, so I totally mm-hmm. get that. So, you know, mm-hmm. we're about to wrap this thing up. I have one final question. D has All right. one final question. And uh, I got I'll two go, final questions. Well, D okay. has two Dude, final questions. On, so I'll on. go ahead and get mine out of the way, and then D, you can ask yours. So, Stephanie. You know, because the Great Gingerbread War is coming up and we are in the Christmas month, I want to ask you, like, what is one of your favorite memories from the holidays? My mama. She was a big Christmas. She was the glue to our whole family. And I grew up in Tennessee inside aunts and uncles and cousins and babies and just all this family stuff. But I don't have any of that right now. So I feel like, you know, I merely miss that's my memories is my 
because uh, like I said, we moved around. So like mm -hmm. I was, I didn't get to stay with my family. I had, you know, to follow my stepdad's career around and with my mom and stuff. So right. my biggest memories are being a very young child with when my parents were still together, you know, say four or five years old, um, Neil Diamond on the stereo, the record mm -hmm. player mm -hmm. dancing around the Christmas tree in my favorite nightgown with a big candy cane and dog and, you know, um, memories of being a child before you're just, you know, that <laughs> bit up and spit out by the crazy world, you know, mm -hmm. before you really have to worry about all this riffraff that goes on when you're an adult, the whole right. adulting, but you know, memories yeah. of my mom, <laughs> for sure. She would do the gingerbread house. She would do mm, the cookies nice. and the baking and cooking, you know, cooking the whole meal. I mean, it's good Southern cooking. I mean, I'm telling you, <laughs> my mom fed everybody. I mean, ever since I can remember and I'm finding myself doing the same thing. I'm like, I do not let people go hungry. Like, there's food, there's snacks, there's meals, there's like food, you know. Hey, well, I'm, we know I, where to come during the holidays. I'm <laughs> telling you, I will feed all of you uh -huh. and all of your people. I, I oh. mean, when I was a kid, when we were having our little parties, I would invite the whole neighborhood and everybody would get everybody get fed. I mean, even right. my aunts and uncles. And when I was little, my, they would come to my mom's, to our house to eat because my mom was this amazing cook. And she learned from her mom and her grandmother how to that cook. That like my mom. Memphis, Tennessee, mm -hmm. we're talking Mississippi, deep south, home cooking, fried chicken, butter on everything. Mac and cheese. <laughs> That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. Feel good food, comfort food. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have that in, and I have to say this, and this would make sense. All of the amazing Christmas specials from the 70s mm -hmm. and, and 80s, but like, the peanuts specials where you, you know, we didn't have TiVo. We had to sit and watch all the commercials and, and you better sit down and watch it then. Cause that right. was the only time you had a that chance to see it unless you got it on VHS tape yep. and Rudolph the red nosed reindeer, frosty, the snowman. I'm talking about okay. old school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christmas. Burl oh, eyes. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You guys might not know. Maybe your parents know, but you oh. know, I'm talking about oh. that. Oh, we we know about oh, we the know. heat. We know about heat miser yeah, and, heat and miser, his battle. Uh huh. Yeah, all that stuff used to come on. Uh, it would come on ABC gold. Family when we were kids. Like yeah, all I, the claymation I, specials. I make my kids watch them every year, and I've watched them every year growing up. And yeah, yeah, those movies you don't let them die down. No, yeah. and that's where and that's where I learned those those movies and those you know holiday classics are where I learned a lot about my voices and what I could contribute because i don't have, i don't know if i if anybody knows but i i did some voices of some of these toys i had a, a job for a little <laughs> while for a couple of years doing voices for like toys that you see at like hallmark right. or whatever little hallmark. dancing right, right. hamsters and you know little bunnies that had uh that um Easter, the things that know, kids just hit all of them on turn yeah. them all on <laughs> halloween ooh, you know just uh goblins mm -hmm. and but all of it was all cute little toys for little kids and stuff and so i was able to do some of that so i learned a lot of those voices and contributed to those with these toys through what i learned and listened to when i was a kid mm -hmm. and that's then getting awesome. to sing in those voices that's another thing i want to say before we we uh we sign out we still got two questions but mm -hmm. uh i did write a song for halloween it's called halloween rocks it is up finally up on youtube we got it we got it out before th uh halloween it was written well over 20 years ago but wow. I did the voices of the little boy singing it, and he sounds like Gohan. So, like, it's kind of cute. <laughs> I'll be checking and, that out. Yeah, it's Halloween I'll Rocks. Include the link in the video. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Do Kids it. Christmas is the other one, because it's about to be Christmas. So that's a that's when uh, you should hey, I'm adding them both to my Halloween and my Christmas play. Uh, there you it's go. Kids Get Christmas. Try. And it's all put together. Um, like I said, Dan put together all these cute little pictures so that you can put it up on YouTube. That's another thing I need to learn how to do is put all my music up. All my old music that I did years ago. And then I hopefully my bucket list is to uh, cut an album. I'm ready to do it. Maybe next year's the year. Get all I've got all the musicians. Hey, Just well, a matter of getting the money it, together. Hey, post about it and take a we're studio. Support you. Mm -hmm. That's post right. The material, write the material, borrow whatever I gotta do. I'm ready to, write, to do my own album. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Now I you answer my question. Now D, take it away. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um First off, I like to ask, uh, did you have or do you have a favorite 80s or 90s movie or both? Movies? Yep. 
80s or 90s, I say 70s is easy because I was a little kid watching Grease and Sound of Music. I mean, Grease is phenomenal. Music of so, Oz, big musical. Phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But 80s, oh my gosh, there were so many sweet, funny teen movies like um, 16 That's, Candles. Uh, John mm-hmm. Hughes movies. Nice. Yes, uh-huh. I loved uh, John Candy and, oh, mm. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh, great movie. I'm a huge Steve Martin fan, and I'm, yeah. I grew up with that old school Saturday Night Live. My uh-huh. dad would watch it. Phenomenal it movie. I fell asleep. Uh, big fans of that original Saturday Night Live cast with um, Steve Martin, Bill Murray, mm-hmm. Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Back in the day. Back Dan in the day. Dan Aykroyd. What happened to that guy? He was in a bunch of movies, too. Yeah, yeah what? Is he His just brothers playing low and, now? Yeah, I'm not sure what he's up to I miss now. him. He's, uh, he's going to be in the new Ghostbusters movie that's coming out. Is he? Oh, he should. Okay. Yeah, it's a cameo. That's fun. Can you one? believe okay. that's coming that's back? Fun. That's great. Who are you going to call? Yeah, that's what that's what I was thinking about when she said his name. You know, who, I mean, you can't forget that movie. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I do have a question since you gave me your answer. Phenomenal answer. Mm-hmm. Do you, between Grease 1 and 2, which one do you like more? You know, I barely I, even I saw Grease 2. I mean, Grease, Grease, Grease 2 one is was, not good. Don't, Grease 2 is not good. It is not bad. Travis, not it's, terrible. It's, not good. it's silly and fun. Michelle Pfeiffer, and it, a, yeah, exactly. It was worth putting out some great try. acting, great actors. I think one was Michelle Pfeiffer in that. Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer. Was yeah, in. that she was a was big one for her. Yeah, but Reese no, I, I was say. a huge Olivia Newton-John fan, and then mm-hmm. you know John Travolta. Oh my God, and they're both in the same. Well, yeah, movie. it's tough, but I don't get to ask this question that often. That's why I asked it. You yeah. Know, when am I ever going to get to ask somebody about this besides Trav? Well, I liked all that stuff because it was not only good, good, a yeah. good movie, but it was a musical and there was singing. Yeah, I thought they I, killed it in the second one, to be honest with you. Yeah, it was adorable. I loved it. Yeah. But I just, that yeah. original one, I don't know. It's hard. Yeah. It's like, see, it's talking about OG, um, y'all. Exactly. I mean, I there's mean. people that come up to me and I'm not dogging anybody, but they're like, man, you're my Gohan, you're my Goku. And it's like, <laughs> I don't, you know, everybody has different preferences and a lot of it starts with what they heard first and once yeah, they right, hear that yeah. stuff first and then it gets into like you said it gets ingrained into their childhood and so whenever mm-hmm. sometimes i'll do these voices on the spot it's so funny it's so cute to see the reactions i bet it is because early awesome. on when i did these conventions they didn't believe it was me they're like no 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 because you know a lot of my <laughs> fans were like you know eight twelve fifteen yeah they were like i'd have to do the voice for them this 20 mm-hmm. years ago they were like no you're a girl you can't you can't possibly be the voice of gohan that's crazy. It's the same thing with the voice actress that uh, voices Bart Simpson. And I, like, yeah. Found out, yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, I remember being a kid and finding that out. I was like, oh, yeah. Thought, yeah. Same with Tommy Pickles. Yeah, from and, uh, it's a lot. Bobby, yeah, Bobby Hill on King of the Hill. Oh, yeah, Bob. <laughs> yeah, but damn, I can sound just like Bobby. Yeah, <laughs> kind of raspy little boy voice. Now, yeah, and- uh, the second question I have for you, the second on schedule question is growing up did you have a favorite horror movie or was there anything that scared you growing up whether it was a horror movie something uh-huh. you just didn't like in a tv show not yeah, necessarily that gave you in nightmares yeah was there anything that stuck with you it anything? started with it started with the wizard of oz and those dang flying monkeys man yeah mm. i've heard that from people too man when you're three you or four it. that's some mm-hmm. scary stuff man that's like that's mm-hmm. when i turned it off or i had to leave the room you know they were trying to kill the uh the, the scarecrow they were trying to take him out yeah <laughs> i don't remember i remember be, when you're when you're that young that's very traumatic Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, no, I mean, I, you know, growing up, I was I kind of liked the, some of the horror movies, especially when I got into my teens, because that's what we were all watching. Yeah. We always thought it was oh, really yeah. cool. Y'all but had drive like, in theaters and stuff then, too. Yeah, right? yeah man. I yes. Wish. But then as I got older, I don't know, mm. I got I don't know, I got more prudy and like I didn't want to have nightmares and that stuff yeah. that sticks with me like I. I don't like seeing dead people, dead animals. Like if we, if something's dead out on the road, like it really bothers yeah. me. Like yeah, I get yeah. really upset because <laughs> I'm a softy, you know. Mm. <laughs> but I mean, I'm good now. But like, Pet Cemetery kind of got me. But oh, man. and That's I met one. actor. I met the cute little boy actor that oh, played Gage. Yes, uh-huh. he's doing yeah. conventions now. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. wow! I got yeah. his autograph over here. It's right here. Oh my god. <laughs> Literally right here, y'all. Look at oh, him. Hey, there he is. Oh, yes. Man. Look, oh. I have to put my glasses on because he signed it. So Miko was his name. Miko. That's so yeah. funny. He was that, two and a yeah. half, y'all. Two and That's a half. Crazy. 
Yeah, awesome. that's uh, awesome. that awesome. Cemetery uh, Two was the one that gave me nightmares as a kid. See, I haven't seen that one yet. Mm-hmm. But because I like well, the first one it's, so much, uh, and I and I love Fred Gwynn, he was uh, Herman Munster. He was in it too. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yeah, exactly. Yes, wasn't he amazing? Yeah, so now I feel like I gotta see Pet Cemetery Two. Was it my cousin Vinny? That was the last movie he did. Oh he my! Passed away, right? He was great. He was amazing. You, mm-hmm. you I'm around with you on that bank. These two Utes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these two Utes. All of that you know, movie. But, yeah, but that. Uh, but Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Like, Thanks so much for awesome having me, having guys. Hey. I feel like we're all like in the same. We're not, but we're, I feel like we're kind of in the same room. We yeah, just we're in the same are. bubble right now. We're we in just the had same ourselves bubble. a pep uh-huh. talk. Uh huh. Yeah, because look, it's like I say all the time when you come uh-huh. up here all leveling up with Benjamin Banks, it's like Olive Garden. We're all family. You're part Pass of the me some breadsticks. <laughs> hey, I already, hey, I'm going to uh, ship them hungry. to you. I'm going <laughs> to mail them to you because we I, we got to give somebody else some breadsticks too that we uh, interviewed recently. So mm-hmm. uh, before yeah. we let you go, let everybody in social media land know where they can find you at. Oh, okay. StephanieNadolny.com is uh, up and coming. I'm, I'm having a little bit of issues with my the webmaster and all of that, but that's, that's in action or whatever you want to say under construction and then i've yep. got stephanie nadalny voice actress on facebook stephanie nadalny just my name all lowercase on instagram i do have twitter i'm not on there very often i'm kind of like never got the groove of the hashtag thing i just didn't get it hashtag. but i do have steph vox steph vox i believe vox and then um tiktok is a new one for me um i'm behind the times i'm sorry but i mean that's just that's right up my alley making videos and stuff so i'm hopefully gonna get right all over that because right. there's all kinds mm-hmm. of things that even happen in everyday life seriously mm-hmm. like that i could be making these movies with my dog my cat you know just weird things that happen around the house i'm gonna try up. to start aren't they yep. yeah there's are so fun it's like i just don't know how the technical stuff yet like all like how to edit and add music anyway I understand. <laughs> hey, hey, just, hey, look, just send the videos my way. I'll edit them. I, I was going to say, okay. or, inv- invite them uh, nieces over. Yes. That's true, too. Yeah, your <laughs> they, nieces yes. will know. Uh, they grew, yeah. you, you guys all grew up doing this. This is like the sec- second language to you. Know, hey, first, we're, hey, I, we're still uh, trying to yeah. get used to the TikTok stuff, but we got a couple videos up there that's doing pretty well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there's some on there now with me performing. I still sit in and, and perform with Vince Vance and the Valiants, the band I grew up you know singing with all through my 20s and 30s and they're still they're still around um yeah. based in new orleans now so yeah i mean there's all kinds of stuff I, the sky's the limit i'm really looking forward to the next year so yeah I, I mean i'm on social media i love keeping track of everybody i answer all my fan mail um i do autographs through the mail i do have a cameo if anyone wants a shout out for any special occasion i do cameo uh, i do autographs through the mail and i will have at some point a merch page where people can like buy you know sign pops or whatever right. i can put together for that so nice. yeah i'm looking yeah. forward to next year so come out and see me i'll start putting up where i'm going to be um appearing on the page and then hopefully get some amazing new voice acting role in the very near future maybe awesome. disney yeah. or something i'd love to get a character like a voice of a character to where that sings like a character oh, singing voice, a hey, there like the Little Mermaid. Of, yeah, there are yes. a lot of animes out there now where it's like there's, you know, singing in them. Like one the music is called, and uh, stuff. Okay, yeah, there's this one I just recently watched called uh, Carol on Tuesday, which is on Netflix, and mm-hmm. it's just all about just singing. You know what I'm saying? Oh. So yeah, I mean, you where know, were all these? Where were all yeah, these I will American say Idol too. shows when I was a kid? I'd have been all over that. A- anime wasn't as I mean, it wasn't yeah. as big back then. You know, but I'll right say on. too. That there's a lot of genre to it now it's not just all flat action shows mm-hmm. it's a lot to it it's like yeah. you know but just like as many uh different genres there are to novels there are to anime just right, about. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got you got anime. cooking show animes mm-hmm. uh, are you animes, I'm ready. Yeah, animes. Yeah. I, I need to get with my buddy john and try to see what sentai has going on down yeah there you Houston. should really you really got a shot now because it's mm-hmm. so wide and you mm-hmm. know People like know i said earlier are. there's so much coming out yeah, yeah. that helps a lot to getting that yeah. that resume going yep mm-hmm. it's you like when you first get started until you get cast you don't get a resume well you can't get a resume until you get cast. there's all this like backwards and forwards trying to get into the industry when when you first start so it's, it's really hard to get mm. into this industry and really kind of make a name for yourself and 
and be able to have something to propel from. So what I, what I had to do and what a lot of people are doing is having something else to do to pay the bills and then working on your career yep. and your passion on the side until you can get that foot in the door and then you can exactly. kind of jump off from Just there. Off. Exactly. Trust me, I, I've I totally had some understand. crazy jobs, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> to put the food on the table, literally. I mean, serious. <laughs> I was like a, a, a handler for like characters that would dress up in the big suits at the conventions. And I was I, I waited tables. I bartended. I... Wow walk dogs i mean gave out cookies samples and i mean i just seriously <laughs> <laughs> but it's good work ethic you know yeah, yeah. it is you know, i'm willing to it do keeps it you grind. sometimes you got to grind yeah yes. it, keeps you, it keeps you humble and it doesn't it does you, you get it does head, and so people exactly. looking people in the eye we are all equals mm -hmm. you know that's where the the down part of society is that's what's killing everything is that people aren't looking at, at each other as brothers and sisters and equals no yeah. matter what you believe what the color of your skin is or your beliefs it's like or you know political stuff it's like you know yep. we're all we all bleed red we're all yeah, that's right. and we're all here to learn valuable lessons and experience we need to make the best of it while we're here because we are going to be that's right you only get gone. one that's what yeah. i tell I people that. you only get one this, this earth this this whole galaxy the space all of that is going to outlive all of us by bajillions of years we can uh, so yeah, still be here when we're gone mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It'll be, it'll still be here. We're not killing the earth. The earth is gonna be is killing us. Yeah. If anything, I mean, yeah. you know, right. people are, it's a, it's that's what Mark Wahlberg said. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, stay us. humble, make the best of it. Go out there and shine your light. And if you got demons, man, strangle them. Yep, mm -hmm. that's right. right. Well, there, man, they'll take you down. Don't waste it. Yeah, now, I'm Trav, living proof. Trav, let everybody know where they can find you at in social media land. Yes, right. yes. Right. Please, please reach out if you have any questions um if you want me to come to your con make the requests i'd love to get up to washington new york Virginia. different parts of you know Virginia, yeah over you know Yay. maybe overseas again once things are safe to do so mm -hmm. i'm up for it mm -hmm. so thanks All so right. much for having me guys, you you're, guys welcome. Absolutely. you're welcome absolutely you're welcome now yes. uh try out Go ahead and say where they can find oh, you at the social media. Oh, yeah, that's right. Try. You can find me on the Instagram at ZK Audio. I'm on the Twitter at T R A V I O S C K. Mr. Rebellious, where are they going to find you at? You can find me at Rebellious double underscore D23 at Instagram.com. Thanks. Hey, you can find me, your hero, Benjamin Banks, at King Benji underscore Banks. On Twitter and Instagram, you can find me on Facebook at Benjamin Banks. I should be the first person to pop up. If not, then I need to contact Mr. Zuckerberg. Thank you again, <laughs> Stephanie, for joining us on this interview. Thank you, everybody, for watching this interview. Make sure that you check out some more of our interviews, reaction videos, and reviews that we have here on the channel. Podcasts with brand new episodes every Tuesday. And then the video of that episode is up here on YouTube on Friday. Like I always say, keep that pinky up, stay positive, and prepare for the great gingerbread war. We'll see you next time on Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Peace. Come here, me Yeah. Thanks again, everybody, for watching another episode of Leveling Up with Benjamin Banks. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe to the channel. Podcast, we got that too. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for further episodes and notifications. Thanks a lot to our patrons. And if you don't mind, join the Patreon. We'll be having new specials coming up soon.